If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum leadership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I love Anchor because it's really easy to use, very accessible to record your podcast, and has excellent sound quality. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Also, I would like to announce that we are going to have the sixth small group, small Zoom group, I should say, uh, meeting on May 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific time zone. And if you want to come to this, please go to Facebook Living with NLD. Uh, sorry, not living with NLD.com, but go to Facebook with Living with NLD page, and you should see underneath groups a small Zoom group uh, for it, and you can ask to join that group, and um, you will uh, be able to uh, come to it. Or you can message me on Facebook. My name is Jennifer Purcell. And my middle name is Lynn, so you'll have to look for that as well. Um, or you can email me at livingwithanalty at gmail.com about it. And I do respond to those emails quite frequently. So um, that will work too. And the meeting lasts about an hour and a half. So it goes until 1130 um, Pacific time zone again. So if you have any issues converting it to your time zone, if you're in a different time zone, just let me know. I can help you figure that out. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Purcell, a.k.a. Ever Junior Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD Project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. So today I will be playing the interview that I recorded with Thomas in December of last year. And he has NVLD and auditory processing disorder. And he also has dysgraphia. And as my understanding of those things, auditory processing disorder affects how you process things with your auditory functions and dysgraphia affects how you gather your thoughts when you're talking and when you're trying to write things as well and basically when you're trying to communicate and um, I'm going to be asking him questions about how his life is with those things that he has and this is going to be part one of that interview and there will be two parts of that interview and this will be the first part of it. The next part of it will be in, um, will be after I do two solos after this one, because I usually rotate 
with the interviews. So I hope you enjoy this interview and learn something new. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer Purcell, aka Everchanging Butterfly. And today I'm going to be interviewing Thomas and asking him some questions about NLD and um, other uh, LDs that he has, which he will be talking about, and also his life with NLD. And I will let Thomas introduce himself to the audience. Hi, um, my name is Thomas. Um, I'm a 27 year old. I'm, uh, I don't know, basically right now, um, um, I'm, um, I've got a, I've got a three degree in criminal justice. I'm trying to apply to law school. Um, and yeah, I was born with an LD and a variety of other learning disorders and uh, been impacted by it. Yeah. Okay. And um, also, uh, so Thomas, do you know what caused um, the NLD or other learning disabilities as well? We don't, well, I mean, I don't think anyone really, really knows. Um, NLD, there's a, there isn't a lot of research in, in it. So um, it's almost impossible to really say what caused it because of, this, because of that lack of research. Um, so I don't know is the answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, for, you know, for me, I, when I was diagnosed, I was 19 and they said I was born with it, but um, you know, like yeah. you said, there's there's well, not being born with it. Being like, that is that is the condition. That, that is a necessary condition for it. You can't develop NLD later in life. That's just yeah. Not the thing. It is it. I mean, very generally speaking, your brain didn't develop the way it should have developed, and mm -hmm. thus the you NLD. Know, there's like some information that suggests that there's less gray matter. Uh, there's so just there just isn't a lot of liter literature, so you re so it's hard to say what caused it, or was it a series of causes? Because it doesn't have to be just one. A series of causes could, could potentially compound one another and make it worse than it, than it would have otherwise been. So, but without that knowledge, you can't really. It's hard to say, but yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you that um, many things can cause it and make it worse depending on that person's um, life and um, other things that they may have in their um, life or situation. Um, so how do you feel about um, having NLD? And um, I know you also said you have dysgraphia and um, auditory processing disorder. It's very, it's very challenging, you know. I feel that within our modern society, this is one of the most underlooked and underappreciated disabilities. And kind of as a result, it really has a direct impact on how I feel and, and, you, and you so internalize it. Um, how do I feel about it? I guess, I would say it's very frustrating, um, but at the same time, though, I mean, I, I appreciate that this isn't an intellectual disability. That, at the very least, I have some parts of my mind still working well enough so that I can deliver a certain quality of, of, of so, a certain quality of. I'm able to. I'm able to participate in parts of, of society that I otherwise wouldn't if it was an intellectual disability, I guess. But just because I can't immediately not interact with them, it, it doesn't mean those those interactions aren't, aren't very challenging. Just this overall gap in knowledge 
um, that the average person seems to have, um, and and more so that that that, that this that there are problems associated simply with how how it's not discussed almost at all, um, and so it can feel very isolating. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's essentially kind of what it is. It's very isolating, very frustrating. You know, and those come from, from that and, and also trying to advocate for for uh, for accommodation. It it's um you know it, 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 like you know it, it almost feels like a war of attrition in the sense that it just doesn't feel like you're ever really truly getting anywhere. That one battle, one success with one issue, one one particular circumstance doesn't end really lead on to any overall or even a marginal or overall like improvement um it, it's just it's just yeah as i would say it's, it's like it feels like it, it feels like maybe you're living in an endless war of attrition um with yourself with society um and and with those and and with those that you, you interact with on a more personal basis and on a less personal basis Yeah, um, I can relate to what you were saying, too, because at m many times I think I'm frustrated with having NLP as well. And um, I think for me, the times when I'm frustrated is um, when I have a, a challenge that may come up and it's um, maybe difficult to um, I guess, deal with, you could say. And um, like an example would be, um, I uh, try to knit some things for people. And sometimes because of the fine motor challenges that I have with NLD, it can be tricky to do that. And um, while I wanna make something for somebody that is beautiful, it can be tricky to do it because, you know, if I'm using um, small needles, that's harder to do than it with bigger needles. So that, that can be challenging sometimes. Um, but other times NLD is a good thing because it can make the, some things easier. Like um, I know for me, I'm really good at um, memorizing uh, people's names and, uh, their birthdays and um, just like uh, numbers also. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's a positive thing. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I've i never found- But it does make um, socialization. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, what? You were gonna say, unfortunately, something. Oh, well. No, 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 I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What? Oh, uh, that's okay. I was just gonna say that uh, it does, it can make socialization with uh, other people difficult at times. Mm hmm yeah, I agree with that. Uh -huh. um, but you were gonna say something. So, there's a range in severity with NLD, like with any other disorder, or frankly, anything. There hardly are you ever, hardly, hardly, or I don't believe there's anything that, that, that truly everyone is exactly the same. But there's usually a range. So you meet these certain set of symptoms and there's a bit of a range as to how severe, so basically how many problems you're gonna have. Um, you know, there's some people with NLD who can't even read anger, like, like, like when someone in, in any capacity and, and, and other people with NLD who, who can read it, but they, for example, can't read more subtle emotions like, like frustration, for example, will be able to see read about what the shoulders, shoulders with myself, I guess, speak to that varying degree, my memory has always been kind of uh, uh, working in the fourth percentile, which isn't too helpful. 
names, faces, places. Obviously, problems memorizing them. Uh, I need a very structured way to to learn to really be able to retain information. Um, I'd often say that you know when I'm learning, I I always assume to some degree that my short-term memory isn't functional, so I have to often spend an extra amount of time trying to put into my long-term memory, which 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 means I just spend more time. Um, yeah, it's a, but also the socialization of it. Again, I feel like there, it's it's very hard. You know, I think it's almost analogous. Imagine, imagine, you know, you're like a bee in a beehive, and you can't communicate with the other bees effectively. And that was kind of, and imagine just how disorganized or confused you would be if it's necessary, like it is in a beehive or in our society to communicate with people, be able to understand what they're expression, expressing um, verbally and non-verbally. Um, and when you have those breaks and in, in, in that analytical process, um, and, and I guess analytical interpretive process, it can, it really can have a drastic impact on how you how you live within that society as a whole, and the types of experiences you have. It can be it can limit the types of experiences you have, um, or limit the possible. I guess you know you're not going to have you're going to have to struggle with your friends. You're going to struggle with with other associated things, um, but not just not just making friends. It's more like, you know, you want something from someone else and you can't adequately, can't properly explain yourself in a concise way. And unfortunately, people write other people off that are not similar to them or different than what they normally interact with. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, w I can definitely relate to what you're saying because I would agree with you to that um, there is a, a varying degree of uh, how an NLD affects uh, people and um, the um, different symptoms that they can um, have. Um, but yeah, you did a very good job there describing um, how it can be um, expressed and that analogy. Um, and um, I think we were already kind of getting into some of the challenges that people usually have with NLD, but I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit more about any of them with, uh, I know you kind of said with, some school, with your schooling or with work. Well, it's very, you know, it's very challenging. I mean, I mean, I would say to speak to the overall challenges, you know, I would say, you know, first that there are problems receiving accommodation. Even in my province in Manitoba, um, we have, it is a constant battle that every, almost every organization I've been across. Um, I would say it's like pulling teeth. It's uncomfortable that no one wants to do it. And when you do it and you succeed in doing it, there is a lot of pain at the end. Uh, and that's kind of how I would kind of describe the process of, of getting in accommodation. You know, um, you know it, it's very uncomfortable and it's very challenging. Um, getting accommodation in, in, in your educational environment or, or in the workplace. Um, I've never had a single year where I'm working or in school where accommodations are actively complied with, where respect is shown. It is usually, um, I'd say, yeah, it, it, it is usually, I would say out of every, you know, I'd say I, I've had I have problems between 20, with 20 to 30 percent of the people I interact with that I, I'm requesting accommodation or, or, or but ignoring accommodation, but ju ju just, just asking people to show 
patience, to show, to show what is really, really respect. To respect your, your, your individual, your, 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 to respect your, your basic humanity. I feel that is just something you know, that you, know, you have to treat people like children and you have to show them that just because someone is different than you, they might explain things in a way that's a little bit different than you're used to, doesn't make them any less human than, than you are. Um, I would say this is no different than racism or sexism or any of the other ones. Um, the difference though being is that we just don't have the support networks. Um, that is probably one of the biggest problems. We just do not have the support networks. I'm fortunate though, in my province of Manitoba, we have some of the strongest um, human rights protections on earth. And that's quite a claim to make, I know, but it's based on um, what is written in law. And basically my promise is made, it's made very cheap. If you understand the law, you can almost guarantee that you can resolve every, almost every issue of actual discrimination, since not all issues of perceived discrimination are discrimination um, in your favor, but it requires that you know the law. That's, a, that's a, another other hassle I find, another, another huge problem I find, is that you've got an LD or even broadly speaking, learning disabilities, but in general, either specific or non-specific, you really need a strong grasp of, 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 of what those codified protections are. What, what are, what is written in law that is, that, 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 that is preventing other people from treating you poorly or unfairly or in a way that, that is going to have some kind of short, medium or long-term impact on um, so the challenge is basically ours. The society we live in is the most accepting and unaccepting society that we've ever lived in. We're accepting for groups that seem, in my, my, my opinion, that have had adequate support. But if you don't have adequate support, um, your needs seem to just matter less. And to unfortunately get your needs recognized, even in a province like Manitoba or anywhere across Canada with similar protections, you really, it's a long and drawn out process where you, you know, you have to make threats of human rights complaints, where you have to work with individual organizations to change up their policies and procedures. It is exhausting, but changes can be made. But though, though, I'm a little bit different. So I know like that some of your audience is the United States and, or most of it, but just seems to the United States. And it isn't as easy or isn't as possible down south as it is up here. Having codified protections makes my job a lot easier. Fighting for codified protections is a different animal altogether. Um, I would not want to be that person because that is several decades of fighting um, to get those things codified. Um, but it still takes me years to get these changes done, despite the, the despite the rule of law support, despite the very law, despite the laws living under supporting. Um, yeah, finding work is almost impossible. Um, if, you, if an employer notices something that's off, you can learn learning disabilities are really nothing but you can think of them as nothing but. They're nothing but a list of symptoms. When we talk about degree, we have to keep in mind that you still have to meet a certain list of symptoms. Every moment NLD has to meet certain symptoms, no matter how severe you are, to be given the diagnosis of NLD. So it would go to reason that it isn't hard or it isn't even challenging to really detect if someone have a, has a learning disability. If, um, and at least for my psychologist, the way you would do this is that people with NLD have, have a unique way of talking, um, mm -hmm. unique, basically, uh, basically a unique way of expressing how, how their thoughts and, and, they, and, and, and really and, and conversing with other people. And if you can pick up on that and you're an employer, you do not want to hire some NLD or any learning disability. Because at least in this province, that would make the ban, you'd have an obligation to accommodate them. And that, uh, and you know, why accommodate them when you could hire someone who doesn't have anything wrong with them or has more manageable disabilities um, that um, 
So, yeah, I would say those are some of the immediate barriers. Um, and kind of going back, the other barrier is, is that, you know, despite our society being more inclusive in some respects than it ever has been, it is only inclusive towards those that have adequate support networks. An example would be as LGBT 30 years ago was nowhere near as accepted as it was now. It took them though decades of advocacy to get to this point though. Thousands, tens of thousands of people working together. People with learning disabilities do not have that. Anywhere near that. We have underfunded learning disability associations peppered all throughout North America that basically can't really do much. They can maybe provide you some information and that's it. Uh, they don't have the money to fight for you. Behalf, or if they do, they can't take on more than just a handful of people with problems. And this is, again, kind of assuming that the person with learning disability understands that their rights have been violated. Laws are complicated to understand. And an NLD specifically impairs your reasoning ability. So it raises it that with NLD could have their rights violated and not even realize their rights are being violated. You know? So mm -hmm. kind of, it is a very complicated problem. Um, but there is some light at the end of the tunnel, obviously. Like right now, I've been working with the University of Winnipeg and they've made some very positive policy changes. They have also, they're also apparently gonna have a workshop on learning disabilities. But to get that, it took time. I would say almost over, oh my God, two? It's about two years, almost almost two years of advocacy to get there. It, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a good end point. It's a good, it, I'm really happy where they are right now, but it took a lot of time and a lot of effort. And again, part of that issue was I was the only one doing the work in my university. And supposedly people with NLD, this is based off an American statistic, old one, unfortunately, but 1% but of people have NLD. Learning disabilities were looking between six to upwards of the 15%. But that's a different animal together. Why are we unsure of how many people have it? Because we don't adequately survey people with it. So since we don't adequately survey people with it, we don't know how many resources we should dedicate to people with it. And even if we did have it adequately survey people with it, the other problem is people don't want to identify with it. They want to identify with it because they are stereotyped as basically being stupid, as being intellectually challenged. There are so many problems, but I mean, work can be done, it's just very slow. But progress is progress, the way I look at it, you know? I mean, you know, another good, good way to look at it is that women, took women about a century of advocacy to finally get to a significantly better, better part than they were, say, in the early 1900s. And keep in mind, millions of people fought for that. There is not millions of people marching for people with, 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 with LDs in general, anyways. NLD gets no recognition in almost any capacity. So, yeah. Yeah, you're right. The, those are the some of the main barriers. And I would agree with you that um, the 1% uh, piece that is out there, I'm not sure how accurate that is because like you said, um, some people don't want to uh, identify with it or they, you know, might go misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed uh, because of it, NLD being hard to um, understand. Well, um, it's very frustrating, like not to catch up, but like a common thing I've noticed at least is that ADHD will be given instead of NLD, which is absolutely mm. preposterous to me. No, ADHD is not the reason you're struggling to reason out your work or why you're spending two to four times longer compared to the average student working. But even again, I would say, I, I'm using kind of my problems because the standard of endurance, at least in writing, are pretty high here. In writing, they should know what they're doing. But it took me like over two weeks to find someone who knew what that NLD is. And the way I did it is I would ask, do you know, is ADHD a learning disability? And if they would say yes, I would move on. <laughs> They should, as people with supposed, you know, to become a psychologist, you need your, I believe your doctor and you need at least your PhD, at least your PhD. So that means at least, we're talking about almost 10 years worth of education in total. And it's such an under-researched and under-understood area. 
that, you know, I must have in my, like my city of Winnipeg, I basically, I must have spoken to over 20, almost over 20 psychologists who did not know what, who did not know what ADHD was and wasn't. And the reason I asked them, but why ADHD and MD are different things, they are. But if, but here, the problem is that if they don't know what ADHD is, they might conflate some of the symptoms with NLD with their misunderstanding of what ADHD is. Exactly. But the issue is, is that, so, but like kind of like, then you can have the underpinning problem then is that I was able to find someone, but it's only because I knew this. And I only, and then I only knew this because I, I, I read statistics, I try to update myself and kind of really understand field, at least in a very general capacity. The average person, person with NLT won't necessarily have the support networks necessarily that I do to grasp that, or, or frankly, won't have the ability, the reasoning ability to understand that. So there are just so many, like there are micro and macro problems with this. You know, macro be a media portrays us. I one into one, one group once called this in my province, um, LD's intellectual disabilities. And I, God, after finding it, had to reprimand them and say, what are you doing? There's a saying though, that misinformation though, even if you correct the misinformation, the damage has been done. So, you know, can think of this in after to COVID, you know, Trump has put out a lot of uh, er false COVID information. And even if, those lies are corrected, there's still gonna be some remaining damage because of the initial lies. Or in some cases, if you think of an LD half-truths or just mispre or just, just misconceptions about what it is and what it isn't. It. Or conflation with ADHD, you know what I mean? It's just a whole, I'd say it's like an abstract work of art that you just don't know what to make of. And, but with a proper structured way of understanding, you can understand it. And that's what we think in NLD is. Because NLD is one of those convoluted learning disabilities you can possibly be born with. APD in contrast is a lot easier to understand. I just say, imagine that I'm deaf, but I'm not really deaf. I just might misunderstand what you're saying. And by the way, Miss or Mrs. And Mr. or Miss, you have an accent. So this is going to be an even bigger problem. Easy, two basic things. NLD, yeah, I've got like almost 10 different symptoms you have to to some degree understand. Yeah. And or even describe it, easy to understand. So I'm just really bad at writing that I talk really well. Ah, NLD is never that simple. NLD, like as, as, as you know, there are what? You can have problems with math, you can have problems with the reasoning and, and, and a whole plethora of areas. Some areas might be worse than others, or they might not be worse. The degree of social inability might vary, um, et cetera. Yeah, very true. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.